Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Grand Seiko Spring Drive SBGA001 in stainless steel. You can see and you can purchase this Spring Drive automatic stainless steel all-arounder on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right-hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this, Grand Seiko's most complex dial, with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this Grand Seiko Spring Drive SBGA001 in stainless steel. Now, why do I call this Grand Seiko's most complex dial? Well, because the snowflake may be the most inventive and unconventional, certainly it's the best known, but the champagne sunburst you see here with a dozen individual steps applied to its construction is the most complex dial manufacturer order of the day for Grand Seiko dial makers. This watch, deceptively complex in its rich tones and textures, is also wonderfully versatile as it can be worn across a wide range of wrist sizes and shapes, and thanks to 100 meter water resistance, this is both your dress watch and your sports watch, should you please. Now the watch on my 16 centimeters circumference wrist wears easily. 41 millimeters across the round of the case, it's a nice footprint, contemporary, large but not oversized, and in thickness it's quite bearable at 12.7 millimeters thick. You can see with a generously sloped case flank that melds seamlessly with a dome style bezel, it easily slides underneath not just a suit jacket cuff but also the dress sleeve beneath. From lug to lug, the watch has a measurement of a quite reasonable 48.5 millimeters and it extends to 52.5 lug to lug when you add the solid end links of the bracelet. Now you can see there are pin tool apertures in the lug flanks should you wish to dismount the bracelet and put it on an aftermarket or Grand Seiko strap. And in that case, it would easily, in my estimation, fit a wrist as small as 13 and a half to 14 centimeters in circumference when mounted on the strap. The lug spacing, in case you want to place an advance order for your next strap, is 20 millimeters and it uses standard sized straps with 20 millimeter spans and spring bars. The watch has a hefty feel on the wrist because of the solidity of the case, the bracelet, and the clasp, but it does have a shape that works well with the curve of your wrist. As you can see, the lugs are draped across the mid case and then they slope down dramatically and the bracelet is completely unconstrained. It can be pulled straight down around the tight curve of a smaller wrist. The ergonomics are strong with this one. So is the finish. As you can see, the links are beautifully made, alternating polished and satin finish. There's also a bevel that's perfectly aligned down the shoulder of the links. You can see there's a rounded polished bevel, not the case flank, but the rounded transition from the top to the flank. The bracelet is sized entirely with screws, no pins and sleeves here, and the clasp is a single fold with the security of a twin trigger release, so it's not friction fit, it's not a cheap clamshell, it's a trigger system. Both must be depressed to positively disengage the clasp. Nicely made, well assembled, and like the case, beautifully hand finished. The case shows off Grand Seiko metallurgical talents to good effect. As you can see, the signature Zoratsu optically smooth, distortion-free polish, which is applied by an artisan. It's highly field dependent, and it's achieved by applying the surface directly to the milling device that's used to create the polish. Again, it's very pressure sensitive. It's defined more by feel and experience than a set of standard operating procedures. And the result, both on the bracelet and the case, is sensational. It's the kind of thing you imagine Rolex might have done at some point in the distant past. Well, that recedes into memory. Grand Seiko is keeping handcraft alive on the outside and the inside of its watches. Now, you also note that there are a number of sharp creases, folds, and partition points along the edge of the case. They give the case definition. Yes, it has some sensuous surfaces, but it also has some hard masculine lines that are a bit more aggressive than you'd conventionally find in a time-only pseudo dress watch application. It's quite a bit sharper than a standard Patek Calatrava or a Rolex Cellini. Now you'll also note the dial is sensational. Not just the champagne, we'll talk about that in a moment, but look at the hands and the indices. All of them finished manually. You can see they have a number of nuances that set them apart from the mass of what's available in this price range or any price class. You can see the individual indices are diamond polished, both satin and polished, 
with sharply defined micro facets. Each one has the glittering glint of a cut gem, and the same treatment is applied to the hands at center, which are wonderfully three-dimensional. They have the polished edges and the satin tops, and you can really see that to good advantage right here as I move my finger over the surface of the dial. You can clearly see which portions are satin finished and polished. There's an elegant, simple, lancet-style counterweighted seconds hand, and then an aperture cutout at approximately 7.30 for the power reserve. Now, it does have a screw-down crown for water resistance, 100 meter water resistant. As you manually wind this automatic watch, you can rapidly note the sweep of the power reserve indicator, 72 hours fully wound, and the watch does feature both hacking seconds, so you pull the crown out to extremity, you stop the seconds, you halt the seconds hand, and it features a quick set function in the intermediate position. My nails aren't what they once were, but a quick set for rapidly cycling the date. Note for the time being the totally smooth sweep of the hand. It's not a start stop. There's no beat per minute or beat per hour rate. It is continuous. The dial, pièce de résistance, even compared to the spring drive movement, this is what defines this timepiece, SBJ0011, a champagne silver, gold, slightly yellow, slightly pink. From some angles, it has a little bit of a tinge of red. It's hard to describe it because it is so dynamic. Now, it looks principally silver in the rangefinder, viewfinder of my camera, but I can tell you in person, it has more than a hint of gold to it. I'd say it is more gold than silver. It is richly textured, and yes, a dozen steps are involved in creating this dial. It is more complex to create and more nuanced than the snowflake. Now, turning the watch over, First, let me let you know that this watch has one of the most secure crown assemblies I've ever encountered. It doesn't have any wobble, doesn't have any wiggle or play. It feels like it's mounted on a solid steel stalk. Now you can see what it controls through the case back. Let's get the governing wheel into view. Okay, now we're getting the full spring drive experience. This is the caliber 9R65 automatic spring drive. 30 joules, it features the quick set function, the hacking function, a three day power reserve, 100 meter water resistance, the power reserve indicator on the dial, and it is built and regulated by a watchmaker, but it does not operate in the fashion of a standard Swiss lever escapement. Rather, it has this governing wheel, which is propelled by energy from the mainspring, which can manually wind or allow the automatic system to wind. Now, the mainspring, through a gear train, drives the governing wheel, which, unlike a Swiss balance that bounces back and forth, this only moves in one direction. As it does so, it creates an induced current. By, by moving metallic elements through a magnetic field, it creates an induced current. It's basically like a little generator, but it works both ways. As it speeds up, the more induced current it creates, the more back EMF it generates, which regulates it to slow down. If it gets too slow, it doesn't generate enough of an electromagnetic back EMF, so it speeds up again. And that balance wheel drives a terminal train that operates, let's unhack our movement here, that operates the perfectly smooth sweep of the seconds hand. That's why I say it has no steps, no beat per minute, no beat per hour. It's not beating at five hertz or 50 hertz. It's simply moving continuously, driven by that governing wheel, itself propelled by the mechanical energy of the spring. And again, it's pivoting on 30, lubricated jewels on traditional wheels with traditional bridges and plates. The quartz oscillator does regulate the speed of the governing wheel in conjunction with the back EMF. The quartz oscillator helps to keep the watch adhering to a timekeeping range of roughly plus or minus 15 seconds per month. Remember, a COSC certified Swiss chronometer can be plus six, minus four seconds per day. That's the degree of accuracy you get. You've got that one quartz oscillator built into the induced current circuit. The rest of it is mechanical watchmaking. A dream decades in the making, the first exploratory studies were performed in 1977. The system didn't come to market until the late 90s with its manual wind version and mid-2000s and it's automatic. So you're looking at the culmination of deep R&D with a unique dial, a beautifully finished case and bracelet, 100 meter water resistance, and this is one of the most distinctively Grand Seiko, Grand Seiko products. See it and own it in all its versatile glory on our website.